Welcome back to Critterland. This is Kathy, and today I've got a whole bunch of Calico Critters, Sylvanian Family's Critters, as well as a whole bunch of accessories and furniture, and obviously buildings uh, here to take a look at whether or not the quality and level of detail has changed in the Calico Critters, Sylvanian Family's brand over the years, and in what ways has changed. And I thought back to all the different sets I've purchased and reviewed and that I look at online and the differences I've noticed from like the super vintage to more like maybe 10 years ago time period to more recently and the big changes that I'm seeing for better and worse and the areas where I'm really seeing a lot of consistency. So I thought I'd point out what I'm seeing and I really want to hear what you think. What are your thoughts? So be sure to let me know after you watch the video. Okay, let's get started. So before showing you these examples and direct comparisons, I want to kind of go through what I think the focus has been from the very beginning to now, like what the Sylvanian family's brand has been uh, focused on in producing these products. So this is the very oldest house that we have from, I think, 1993. And I would say the first category would be 1986 to about 2000. And then the more recent would be from 2000, probably all the way up to about 2016. And then the modern period, which would be after 2016 to about now. So the vintage period with these beautiful old fashioned early sets and houses, kind of the brown color, quality, realism, and functional parts uh, seem to be the focus at that time. I say that because they really broke the mold for their time. This was a time when toys were pretty cheap and very plasticky, and they came out with these very high quality looking toys uh, that had more of a realistic look. Like you look at this house, it looks like a collectible dollhouse more than a plasticky toy uh, that was pretty common at that time. And the functional parts uh, mean like the windows open, the doors open, and this kind of thing actually wasn't very common at that time uh, with these plastic toys. And the figures were really, really unique and detailed and different. Now later, the houses got even more detailed and more intricate. That's why I say that the detail I think came later, but the quality and the realism and the functioning of the parts, like this water mill, very functional, uh, was a, a big focus of, of their strategy and still is today. So for this time period, I think their focus was also on quality, but then shifted really more to detail um, in addition to maintaining that realism. And also they began focusing on the volume of parts. So if you notice, the sets just had a ton of pieces. Uh, this watermill bakery is a great example of like tons and tons of pieces. And also all these details, this pizza shop, I mean, there's tons of little pieces there. Um, and we love these sets from, from this time period uh, because they're just so interesting and interactive. And instead of having that kind of old-fashioned, realistic look, they were more like bright and modern, um, but still with a very realistic look compared to other toys. But I noticed that the focus seemed to be more about the intricate details and just how many parts they could cram into those sets, so I love that. So with the more modern sets, like after 2016 to now, the focus again seemed to shift and seem to be on modularity or like connectability of the different buildings. Playability, uh, we heard them talk about that a lot. And then characters and themes. Having said that, they definitely have maintained a high level of quality and detail, especially compared to competitor products and just other toys in general. They really have made an effort to keep that. Um, but it doesn't seem to be as high, and I'll show you some examples of this uh, compared to earlier sets, both with the detail level and with the quality itself. Um, but they do seem to maintain a high level of it overall and seem to kind of calculate like what's the minimum level of quality we can deliver and still have that uh, baseline high quality that people have come to expect. Um, and the same with the detail. They kind of think of, you know, what details can we not include and still be considered a high detail product. So I've noticed that. And let me go through a few examples with you. 
So contrasting that vintage yellow mansion to this grand hotel, it's got really pretty big rooms like the vintage mansion, but a lot more detail. And you compare that to the more recent Red Roof Home uh, series, these are much shorter rooms and smaller rooms. It does have the little light up function um, and it has the modularity or the removable, stackable, rearrangeable rooms, which is a really neat feature but it also kind of puts constraints on the way it's designed. Like this uh, carport home isn't modular uh, and it has a little more flexibility in, in what they can do to make it look cool and have those features. So here is a super old building. This is from, I think, 1993. Uh, this is the first bakery. And here is a more modern cake shop. I think it's 2016. So right there uh, when they were still doing the super detailed buildings like the boutique and the toy shop. Uh, it had lots of beautiful detailing uh, compared to the, the new modern buildings like the pizza shop. But if you go back to this bakery from like the 90s, you can see there's some really beautiful detailing. Uh, the quality level is incredibly high in this oven with the gold paint around it. You have the gold cash register um, and you've got detail where you don't need it. Like there's some plexiglass in there. Uh, that you wouldn't miss if it wasn't there. Um, and then you have this really kind of realistic style with the shelving and the sink. Uh, it's really meant to look like an old-fashioned bakery uh, more than um, a toy, I think. And it's got tons and tons of it. This is like one-tenth of the accessories that it came with. But you see it's all one piece, so it's not quite as detailed as the newer sets, although they did have a lot of pieces that were separated. But this is all glued onto the plate there. And it's got a removable part here. Just a lot goes into this set, a whole lot. You get a lot of value uh, in this set uh, compared to what you see these days. So this is the 2016 Cake Shop. Very beautiful, highly, highly detailed. Uh, you also get a lot of pieces here. There's a whole lot more that's not in here that comes with it. Um, great furniture, also realistic, but a very beautiful and more whimsical style. Uh, more so than what we saw in the early vintage brown uh, shops. And then here is a more modern one, and you see, like, it, it's just very different. It's small, um, and because of that modularity, they're limited and how they can design it and how big it can be. And also the accessories are, like, just detailed enough to be considered uh, highly detailed, <laughs> if that makes any sense. But when you contrast it to the old ones, uh, there's a, just a remarkable difference. And here is the new bakery. Uh, it doesn't come with a building. And this is a cool kind of functional oven where you can bake the bread. You see it comes out, you can twist it. Um, so that's cool, it's playable. Um, but uh, it's it just doesn't have that same uh, kind of high quality and detailed look uh, in the older sets. Um, although compared to other toys and obviously to competitor critters, uh, this is incredibly detailed and uh, durable and high quality. But it just has a very different look. Like if you compare this shelf to the one from the vintage bakery, it uh, just has a much more kind of plasticky uh, look to it. All right, so let's move over here and take a look at some critters. So these are the oldest ones that I have. Uh, she's from the hotel. He's uh, Dr. Murdoch. I don't know how old he is, but he's old. Um, they are still in really good shape. They're very well made. And these are identical replicas of the old duck family from the 90s. And you can see how they spared no detail. I mean, it's stunning. Everything about it is totally gorgeous and detailed and well-made uh, back then. And these are about maybe 2006 to 2010. And I think the it's a little bit of a downgrade from these earlier critters as far as the design of the dress. And these are more modern, uh, but not brand new. Uh, I think all of these would be about 2016. Very detailed, absolutely beautiful, very similar to the ones from the 80s and 90s. These are brand new, and I think they are an upgrade. I mean, some of these critters are just amazing and like highly detailed, more detailed, and more beautiful than their predecessors. So I would say the quality and detail, and especially the variety, has definitely improved over time uh, rather than uh, declining. Uh, and they've also, I wanted to add that they did put out these easy buy ones uh, not too long ago. Uh, you can tell the difference. 
in the outfit, but also the critter itself has less detail, less coloration, and these are meant to be sold at a lower price point compared to the standard critter families. And you can see the tails are molded into the body. Um, so if you compare this to a regular critter, you can see how the color is much more detailed uh, versus the Easy Buy. So I'd much rather they offer these alongside the regular ones rather than downgrading all of them. And here's an example of really exquisite brand new critters with the Town Series. They, they, these are really elegant with fancier outfits, uh, just totally stunning. Uh, nothing like this was available back in the vintage times or even in the recent, few, in the recent history of Sylvanians. These are just really, really pretty. So I think the critters are doing really well as far as maintaining a high level of quality. Now let's take a look at some of this furniture and see how it's stacking up compared to previous sets. So let me illustrate this with some baby items. The cribs actually inspired this video. So this is an older one. It's got tons of detail. It's got a nice poofy mattress there, a blanket, painting on the little knobs there, beautiful red color, drawers, cutouts, um, very good high quality plastic. And this beautiful little toy here, this is uh, like obviously hand painted on the details. I don't know how a machine could have done that. And then this beautiful baby dresser with these little drawers, I mean, four drawers that open, a uh, little detail carved in, little hangers with painted detail on the hangers. Uh, this little duck uh, ride along with lots of little different colors on it. I mean, compared to this brand new one, which is really disappointing. And here is an older table and a newer table. These are um, I thought they were the same at first, but when I compared them, this has a finish on it. This does not. This is a solid piece of plastic without any finishing done. It looks almost identical from far away, but when you get up close, you can see. This has two pieces of plastic together, um, or one piece with a painted top. Uh, I think it's the latter. And this doesn't have any of that detail. It's just a single piece there. Um, so, I mean, that's what we're, that's the trend. That's what we're seeing. You know, um, I don't think they're going to go backwards to how it used to be, like in a, an example like that. Here is a crib that came out after the first one that I showed you. It's also got mattresses and blankets and painted details. So you see they have that same level of detail. It came with three bunk beds, the very popular set that you can still get today with two removable ladders. Um, and then you enter, you know, 2021, and this is what comes in the baby set. I mean, this is like, I mean, it's nice compared to other toys. It's detailed, but compared to what we're used to, it is uh, very different. It's a much thinner plastic. It comes with like these, like, what are these? Like little tiny thin sheets of felt. Um, it is, a, the plastic on the bottom does seem to be good. Um, and then there's this, like, kind of monstrosity that, uh, you know, what is that? Like, that's not what we're used to. It's, uh, there should be removable parts, lots of different paint. You just compare these little art sets, and you see this one looks like Sylvanian, and the new one from 2021, I mean, that could come in, like, you know, an LOL or Barbie set or something. It does not look like Sylvanian's where this one has the two little pieces of chalk separately and a more realistic uh, wooden look. Now this is the kind of thing they would include instead of that uh, beautiful dresser that we saw. Uh, it's much more simpler. I like it and it's detailed, again, compared to other toys, just not compared to older Sylvanian uh, sets. Now, now, to be fair, these are cribs that were provided back in like 2007. Uh, that came with the babies. So they did provide simple items in the past. It wasn't always super detailed. But this is a train that came out in, uh, oh, I don't know the year, but at least 10 years ago, maybe longer. And it's so incredibly detailed. It is so beautiful. It's got lots of painted parts and moving parts and wheels that turn. Um, very, just uh, very well thought out. Uh, it's got this little platform here. Uh, which is simple. And now this is the new one that came out recently. It is so cheap looking compared. Uh, it's all one piece. Just a, It came out of the molder. We had to put the stickers on. It came with stickers. Um, very little detail there. Uh, 
other than what's molded into the plastic, and I don't really consider that detail. I think of detail as something that's added on or painted on uh, or something like that. Um, it does have a little gloss finish there um, on the edges. But the wheels don't turn. It uh, comes with this little uh, train station, which I think is really cute, actually. Uh, it is more detailed uh, than the other one. Um, but it does have a plasticky look. It doesn't really look like that kind of old-fashioned wood look of their earlier plastics. So let's look at these fridges so I can illustrate this a little better. So this one is uh, one of the older fridges we have. It's not that old, and you can still get it today. Uh, but it was first put out, I would say, about maybe eight years ago. Um, it's got so much detail. It's got, like, three drawers, this ice component, uh, little ice cubes, uh, this little drawer with a little scooper so you can scoop the ice out. I mean, look at all that detail. Uh, it comes with like a whole bunch of pieces of food too. You get this big freezer drawer, the French doors. Really amazing. It's a great value. And this one is brand new. So it also has uh, some removable uh, like trays there, racks, whatever you call it. And that little um, detail on the drawer, or the door I mean. It also has the ice maker, which is a really neat function. I like that they did that. And then one single drawer down below. So it's got far less detail uh, other than the ice maker feature than the previous one. And then we go to like much less detail. This is the most recent one that came out in the new kitchen set. It's got one door at the top and then two simple drawers. Um, so, you know, you can kind of see like the gradient going from older to newer and how a lot of these details are falling off in this uh, fridge. And you look at one of these older, I would say this would be sort of vintage. It's got that piping in there. It's got a separate little uh, white section there on the countertop. And this one I would say uh, maybe 2010. It's got little pieces you can put at the top there. Also has the piping. So we see a good deal of consistency for a long time uh, of detail and quality in all these pieces. Uh, this one is uh, more recent. Um, it also has the piping. It's got paint on the little handles. So those are the kinds of details that we're used to. And this is the brand new kitchen, the most recent kitchen they've put out that uh, has far less detail. So we see it does have these pieces that open and then that burner on the top that is connected. It's got an inset sink uh, and then a drawer underneath. And again, the piping is molded in. So we are starting to see this trend in the newer pieces where they're letting a lot of these details kind of fall off, which is really disappointing. Although they do seem to be maintaining the same uh, high grade of plastic for the most part. But then you see something like this, uh, which, is re which is very new uh, with the Town Series, and it is just amazing. It is so beautiful, very detailed. Um, this is more detailed than many of the vintage pieces that we've seen. It does have the gold painted detail, four opening compartments, two ovens and two drawers, with uh, these little uh, accessories that come out and little trays. This one has uh, like a quiche or something that is removable from the pan. I mean, this is really astonishing. So they're capable of making these uh, incredibly detailed pieces of furniture, but we're not seeing them very often. And I'm worried that we're gonna start seeing them less and less often as they kind of make some compromises uh, and cut some corners. So in conclusion, I'd say that really in the last two years, I've seen a really uh, big change in the level of detail, volume of pieces, and quality uh, compared to years past. But up until that point, I think we saw a long history of really consistent quality and detail uh, and improving, uh, really exciting, um, you know, more variety uh, over the last uh, 20 years. And then more recently, we're, we're still seeing good variety. I love this popcorn cart. This is a brand new item uh, in 2021. So we're seeing it, uh, you know, in isolated places or in Japan, but we're not seeing it as much in uh, the U.S. and in a lot of the, the more basic sets they're putting out, which is really disappointing. I mean, if you're looking for a, you know, budget toy, there are lots of competitors out there, but we buy them because they're high quality. And if it turns into competitor brands, you might as well buy the competitors, you know? 
So that's kind of my concern. I really hope that they maintain uh, their high level of quality going into the future and kind of uh, reverse the course uh, that I'm seeing on some of the newer sets, like in the um, Baby Park and the Adventure or Outdoor series. Having said that, I've been very pleased with uh, many of the new sets I'm seeing coming out of Japan and obviously with the figures. I mean, they are just stunning, absolutely beautiful. And I do appreciate that they continue putting out more sets and I like seeing all that variety. So I hope they continue in those two regards. Well, those are just my thoughts and opinions. I'd love to hear your assessment and what you think that the company should be doing going forward, what you'd like to see out of the Sylvanians brand. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.